What were you expecting to happen last night? Um, you know, I got to be the pool reporter, and we're not allowed to say anything about that, uh, what, what we see. But, look, this was a confident football team. And, I, and I, Dan, I heard you say it during the week. They had an entirely beat-up offensive line. I didn't know how the Kansas City Chiefs were going to stop that front four. And I knew that Todd Bowles was going to rush four. He was going to drop seven, right? And that math is in his favor because they only got five eligible there to keep the safeties deep. You didn't know what Patrick Mahomes was going to do. And after a while, it, it kind of looked like a Texas Tech spring game, you know, where he's just running around out there trying to find anybody open. Well, and explain by as the pool reporter, like what access did you have uh, that other reporters didn't have? Well, I was, I mean, they assigned one uh, for each team and I was the only guy that got to go or the only reporter got to go and watch practice. And we got to watch the whole practice. Um, and it wasn't anything different than, than normally during the year. I mean, we don't get to see that much. Um, but this, this was a competent football team. I mean, look, if you talk to those guys on defense, they're like, wait a minute. We went into New Orleans and yeah, everybody was talking about Drew Brees after the game, but they had our number and we beat those guys down. Then we went to Green Bay and took down the most valuable player in the NFL. And when they're sitting around, they're getting a bunch of young guys on defense sitting around on social media and watching television and listening to shows like yours. And they're hearing everybody come on and say that Kansas City is going to hang 37 on them. And they just, they couldn't believe that. They felt, you know, and it's, it's, it's bulletin board, right? It seems simplistic, but they really did feel like nobody was giving them what they had earned, what they had done on the field, even in the postseason. Go back to November. What kind of doubts do you think? I mean, you lost to the Saints. What was that? 38-3 got blown out there. What, what kind of doubts do you think Tampa had about themselves? Well, I mean, if you talk to them, uh, you know, they stayed together. And, and that's a hard thing to do when you're in that position. And I think uh, Tom Brady said it today, you know, uh, with this pandemic, they really couldn't get to, to hang out and know each other very well. This is a close-knit team that did it. Um, you know, without being able to go to dinner or all those extra things. But it was sort of a, uh, like, if you're a football junkie, you got into it. And that's what they did. They just went to work. I think that, you know, uh, Bruce Arians got together with Byron Left, which it really started coming together at the end of the second half of the Kansas City game. The bye week really was big for them. So they never really got down. And, in fact, um, before this game, I mean, Tom Brady texted everybody on the team and said simply, we will win. I mean, before this game. And, and that that's a powerful message. I mean, I'm covering this guy. It's like he's the gridiron Gandhi. Like, I, I don't even know, like, when you're, when you're watching it, it's just amazing the impact that he has on so many players and so many guys in the, in the, uh, in the administration. 